Hello, moon dwellers. Welcome to another episode of Station News News. It's 2025, October the 6th, and you're probably wondering, what is this? We're on the moon. How is the weather station counting down for a storm event? Well, now that the Rocketworks team is back from their six months of replacing the old slow buggy terrain system with the awesome new one, they want to get back to a faster update cycle, which according to Matty would ideally be about two weeks, and they're currently working on the weather system to fix performance issues and the look of storm coming through the walls, which they deem big immersion breakers, since they're also playing the game themselves. And guess what, while they're at it, they created a new storm type, solar storms. This will greatly increase the solar radiation heat influx into your spacesuit, which is indeed a thing even without the storm type, and it also changes how fast your station will heat up from sunlight coming in through window panes. You know, every indoor box hit by sunlight will cause things to heat up. And also, this increases the power output of your solar panels, supposedly by a factor of 4. And while we're at it, the hard solar panel cap has been removed. So depending on which world you're on, that's the solar output you'll get on the moon during a normal day, for example, about 700 watts. So that's quite a cool new thing. Moon, no storms, that's over. But at least stuff is not gonna fly away. You have to take care of your cabling though. If you have consumers that draw more than 5000 watts, like for example a station battery, which has an infinite draw, and you supply more than 5000, then some cables will break. Which you know can be avoided by either using the 100 kilowatt cables, which can also be overburdened, or by using transformers, where you can define how much power can maximally flow through them, or by strategically placing fuses, which in the case of too much energy flow, will burn out their cable segment. So don't do that in some random place. Instead, do it where the cable burnout will cause the overall cable network load to drop significantly. I find it pretty lovely whenever the devs introduce something new to stationers that has the potential of multiplying the complexity of the playthrough and to us early access adopters brings again a changed game experience. We get to play many games. The version 1.0 customers not so much. Though to reiterate it cannot be said too often, even after version 1.0 Rocketworks will definitely continue developing stationers. They keep saying so and they worry people will think differently. So please get that into everybody's head. Version 1.0 is not the end, it's just the official release, whenever that will be. Now, the solar storms are not the only notable change that we have to talk about today. I mean, what does a solar storm do on Vulcan? Look, we have almost 1500 degrees. That's even too much for the hard suit, look how it's heating up. I mean, the basic suit was out of the question anyway, but even the hard suit is struggling now. Well, remember that the developers introduced some new suits and mechanics over a year ago that they have never released because they were waiting for the right opportunity? I mean, it's not like they can just spice stationers by waving a salt shaker over it. All of that has to be tediously implemented, and so they approach this strategically. And now is the time indeed to give us a new suit. The Harm Suit. H-A-R-M. This one is super resistive to thermal energy radiation and convection, but you'll move much more slowly. And you can't have a jetpack, because this thing is just too heavy. And it comes with a new cooling system. If you want proper cooling, you have to place some liquid coolant here. Now we're safe on Vulcan even during a solar storm. The harm suit is brand new, so things may still be subject to change and it may also still have a bug or two. For example, one of its internal slots shows your backpack. And because this implies that your backpack is kind of contained, you can't even drag the suit into your current backpack. I mean, despite this probably being a bug, the logic is sound. You can't put a thing into something that is inside of that thing. I guess this will just be an additional filter. Or maybe they didn't yet decide what to put here, but when they defined empty space, it accidentally became your backpack. Who knows? Should be an easy fix. Now let's look at the numbers. Like already said, with the harm suit you move more slowly, only at 60% actually. What's great about this one is, it seems to have no thermal energy exchange by convection. So no matter how hot or cold the air around you, the suit won't take notice. It's completely sealed off. So in this regard you could say it's infinitely better than the hard suit or the EVA suit. The hard suit, by the way, is better at this insulation by a factor of almost 5. Same for thermal energy exchange by radiation, almost 5 times better. The new harm suit, however, and I assume that's also a mistake, is worse than the hard suit. It has a little less than 80% of the hard suit's thermal radiation insulation capacity. I mean, this must be a mistake. Now, solar heating, which I haven't even heard of until a very recent bug fix that is not yet in the public version, we can see that the hard suit is heated a little more than half as much as the EVA suit by solar radiation. 
The Harm Suit, which was basically introduced specifically for solar storms, has a solar heating resistance that is almost 40 times as high as the Hard Suit's solar radiation resistance. I hope solar storms will be a relevant factor in the future, because if all it takes is sitting in your station for 5 minutes, why would you print a Harm Suit that doesn't allow you to fly around? But anyway you slice it, the Harm Suit should make your oxygen reserves last longer on hot worlds, because as you know, oxygen is also being used to regulate the temperature of your suit. That's why you find oxygen in your waste tank in the first place. Anyway, what does a solar storm do on Europa? Are things getting a little less chilly? I don't know which storms can be triggered by normal playing, but the console commands at least allow us to conjure a solar storm whenever we want one. And as you can see, the environmental temperature goes up indeed, just like on Vulcan. Not enough to survive, but if you haven't yet decided to build an early indoor furnace, which is the absolute heating monster, or maybe just drop some volatiles, set the air on fire, filter out the pollutant, and already have some CO2 for your plants. Then now you can go about gathering some solar storm air. Though heating was never the issue with stationers, or in the real world for that matter, the problem is cooling, because heat is just chaotic particle motion. Calming those down, that's the trick. Increasing entropy, that's easy. It's kind of like escalation and de-escalation when there's brawl on the internet, huh? Anyway, so that's all I have for you today. See you again next time. Health critical. Health critical.